In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Welcome to St. Mary's this morning, on this, this second Sunday before Lent. Um, but our Gospel reading has a very familiar ring with uh, plunge back to the Gospel reading we had at Midnight Mass, the beginning of uh, John's Gospel. And um, just as uh, next week we have the story of the Transfiguration, before we plunge into uh, the realities of human life in Lent, we focus on the Incarnation and this mystery of God with us in our world and in human life. To prepare ourselves for this act of worship, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, bend the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled, as brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um.
God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all, our, in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our readings. First reading is a reading, a reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? And does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts, a long, a long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he has not yet made earth and fields or the world's uh, first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he threw a circle on the face of the deep. When he made the firm skies above. When he established the fountain of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the fountains of the earth. Then I was beside him like a master worker and I was daily in delight, rejoicing before him always. Rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race.
second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself to all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. service. And 11 o'clock, of course, was Matins. 
Some time ago, I was reminiscing with one of my sisters about the confirmation classes we did here. We had a good little laugh at the little booklet the girls were given about how Christian girls should behave. But it made me realise that questions that were going through my head at that time have remained with me and have in a very real sense shaped quite a lot of my life. And one of those questions was this. Could whatever it was that created and sustained this universe that we find ourselves in, with its billions of galaxies and planets and billions of people, could, is it, could it be possible that he could be interested in me? How is it possible to know in a personal way, to as it were, walk through life with such an unbelievably powerful, remote and mysterious being. And the first chapter of John, that was our Gospel reading for today, has probably more than anything helped me to find some answers to this question. It does it by interest, introducing the idea of the Word. The Word who was with God in the beginning and was God. An idea with, which is rich with meaning both in Jewish and Greek literature. Another helpful passage is that one from Proverbs that we had read earlier, where we heard about this character, this female character, called Wisdom, who, like John's word, was with God from the beginning, and was intimately involved in the creation of the universe. So one way of looking at it is this. On the one hand, there is God, the creator of the universe. As God is, infinitely mysterious and different from us and beyond our understanding. That God began this process of creation. Of God expressing God's self in a way that God's creatures could understand. We read in Psalms that the skies pour forth speech. Their voice goes out into all the land. I wonder if you've ever lain on your back in a field or on a beach on a cloudless night away from city lights and looked at the stars and got the message that they were proclaiming, got caught up in the awesomeness of God, our Creator. So John is telling us here we have a God who approaches us in a way that we can understand. He speaks to us through God's creation. And God speaks to us in other ways too that we find in this passage. God is a light, a light that shines in the darkness. Because all the reasons we invent for taking ourselves seriously run out, but we still seem unable to live without them. But the Spirit of God has always been in each of us, shining as a light in the darkness. Since the first self-conscious human being started to look for God, God has been actively moving towards us. And there is and always has been a light shining in this darkness so that we can find in the relationship with God the significance, the immortality that we instinctively feel is possible. So John is telling us here that the idea of God has always been accessible to people, people of all history, people throughout all cultures of the world. And it sheds light into our darkness. And it shows us that human lives do have a meaning, and there are ways of living that are authentic and satisfying. I was talking to a Hindu some time ago from the Swami Narayan temple in the Eastern. And he put it rather well. He said that they call the creator of the universe the Supreme Lord. And he is someone who comes to us in different forms and in different places, and he gives everyone experiences so that we should go to him and walk with our hands in his hands. But John goes on to say something even more remarkable than this. At a certain time and a certain place, the word that was God and was with God, 
from the beginning that was life and light was coming into the world as a human being. The God who speaks to us through God's creation, the God who speaks to us through the stirrings of God's spirit in each of us, became flesh and lived among us. The God who speaks was in the word of Paul that we heard from Colossians, pleased to have all God's fullness well in this man, Jesus and so him to recognise all things to himself, to reveal to us all that we need to know about God. I would never have believed 60 years ago that my childish question about how God could be interested in me would find its answer in the Church's doctrine of the Trinity. The three persons of God, our awesome Creator, the Incarnate Word, and our inner light. A professor I worked with in my first job said to me once with a sigh, I wish I could have a faith like yours. But it's not that hard. If we can just stop and listen, listen to what the stars in the sky are saying to us, listen to the story of Jesus' life and death and resurrection as it's recorded for us in the Gospel, listen to the stirring of God's Spirit within us, then it's not so hard to believe that each one of us is precious, that we are here on earth for a purpose. <coughs> so let's just stand now and declare together our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the power of the Spirit, as in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O oh God of wisdom, whose word became flesh and lived among us, we pray to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and bring to you our intercessions for the world church, our community, the sick, and ourselves. We pray for Christians around the world who see your light shining so that we may all believe in you. We pray for our church leaders, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Pope, Patriarch Bartholomew. We pray for the Church of England, for our Bishop Sarah, and our new Bishop of Edmonton, Anderson. We pray for our General Synod and the London Diocesan Synod, the parishes neighbouring us here in Barnet, and our own church at St Mary's. We pray too for the church in Materi in Western Kenya and their Bishop Rhodes. We pray for Christians in danger, Christians in crisis, Christians working for and with them and with others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our broken world, 
that you are reconciling to yourself and making peace through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for the victims of war who suffer because humans refuse to reconcile their differences in peaceful ways. We pray for the leaders around the world that they may seek peace. We pray for Mike Freer for his service in Finchley as an MP and in return has suffered hatred, threats and worse. We pray for the victims of social media who suffer pain and distress because of the hatred of others. We pray for all those engaged in the pursuit of peace, trust, truth, love, compassion, forgiveness, all for the sake of the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, our friends and families. We ask you to inspire us to volunteer where we can for the health of your body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the sick and hold them in our thoughts, asking you for your healing hand. We pray for all those on our prayer list. We pray for those in our community and in our schools who are suffering from stress or anxiety or hurt in body, mind, or spirit. Give them, Lord, the comfort of your presence and enable them to gain strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Stand before the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you our holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. <laughs>
and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who be nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. There's coffee as usual at the end of this service. Please do uh, come across the hall and join us for that. Uh, later on today, we have our usual Zoom evening prayers. And we are approaching Lent. If you have a palm cross that you would like to return to church to be made into the ashes for Ash Wednesday, please do uh, bring it to church uh, no later than the uh, morning of uh, next Sunday, otherwise it will be uh, just a bit too late. So uh, do bring your palm cross to church if you'd like to, uh, I can choose that to the ashes of Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, of course, is the 14th of, uh, of February this year. And there's uh, a Sunday Eucharist at 8 o'clock in the evening. So put that date in your diary. There are sundry things uh, planned for Lent. And uh, we have our Lent course that will be on Wednesday evenings. There are details on the notice sheet uh, looking at Christianity in Ancient Greek Literature. Reflections by Simon Weil. So um, uh, Francesca is going to pilot us through that. Uh, there is also a, a Churches Together a Lent course. This will be on Ways of Praying. It will be on Sunday afternoons, the first four Sundays of Lent, uh, from 4 till 5.30 up at Trinity Church on the top of Nether Street. Um, and we'll, I'll put together a Lent leaflet uh, during this week, so uh, you have details of those to hand, and uh, watch out for that coming uh, through the ether on the, uh, via the internet, but also we will print off a few uh, so you can take one home next week as well. A very important uh, event in the offing is our dinner dance. That's this coming Saturday, that's the 10th of February, from 7.30 till 10.15. The NGO Jazz Orchestra will be playing for us. Our food is going to be provided for us. Um, you will need to get a ticket and see uh, Julie uh, in the choir, who's there, and will be delighted to, uh, to give you a ticket, I'll sell you a ticket. Um, and uh, uh, our tickets are going quickly, so don't delay too, too much, uh, I, I, just to avoid disappointment. But, um, uh, we've had Enjo with us in the past, and it's a really enjoyable evening, so we know that we've got quality assurance. So, uh, sign up, that's this coming Saturday, Saturday the 10th of February from 7.30 in the hall. Looking a little further ahead into February, we are going to have a, uh, a chance to test, uh, do a test walk of the new path that we are creating as part of our Church and Church Art project. That's going to be on the 25th of February, um, a chance to walk in a, in a, a, a sociable group uh, and it will be no more than two hours, starting from the church, uh, doing a loop of about five miles, and um, there's a chance to uh, have some refreshments at Avenue House at the end. If you want to do part of all, that's absolutely fine as well. There are various bus stops along the way as part of the uh, uh, part of the planning of the walk as well. So that's the 25th of February. Uh, join in with that. So now let's stand to sing our final hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, Amen. in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.